So just keeping our graduates and our college students that will be coming home here soon or starting internships, just keep all of them in your prayers and may we all have a joyful uh, Sabbath of summer. If you are able, I welcome you to please rise, opening your hearts and minds for worship. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. And we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was and who is and who is to come. We thank you, O God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth and through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. And now in these waters you flood us with mercy. Our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and troubled, you calm the troubled waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more and claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, O beginning, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and our lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is taken from the 16th chapter of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man Nothing unclean will 
my Father will love them and will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our abundance of grace. Amen. As a music Sunday goes unplanned, we tried our best to have lots of choirs, and all of course we have to switch things up. Of course it will be fine. Music Sunday can still go on. We can still sing joyful noises, hear the beautiful bells, and we will make a plan for Music Sunday 2.0 later in the summer, or potentially even in the fall. But I know all of you have had these grandiose plans set forth, and then something happens, and we have to make changes. I know for a fact my son did anticipate the last week of school to be uprooted and changed. St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Littlestown has six cases of COVID being circled around its congregation, so many of them are joining us through online technology because they're not able to worship in their building this morning. I don't, of course, want to see us go backwards like we once were pre-COVID or even during COVID, but we understand that even though we make plans, we set forth in action, things happen, things cause us to change. The one thing that does not change, however, my friends, is the peace that comes to us from God. When I go into the home of our homebound members or visit in the hospital or even at the bed of a dying parishioner, it is one of my comforts that I lean into song. So many of you have experienced that if your loved one is is ill or if I'm making a home visit, I, I tend to lean into song and music in order to bring in the peace of God and Christ into that place. One of the hymns that I have found myself turning to just by happenstance and singing quite often in homes is when peace like a river. When peace like a river is sung to me, it, it has this sense of calm. And so for this Music Sunday, I, I wanted to do some reading and research on how did this hymn come to be, but I want to familiarize you and help you remember this hymn, a hymn that I have sang many times when people are dealing with troubled spirits and problems. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea Even in quivering voices, I 
fine discomfort of peace lingers into the space. It is in those moments that I recognize the gift of peace that comes to us from Christ that is unlike anything that the world could possibly give. Indeed, the, the world is in powerful need of peace. You would agree with me, correct? Right now we are seeing things in and around us and abroad that are causing us to challenge our understanding of evil and life and God's presence in these moments. Last Sunday I arrived at church and I didn't even recognize the, the destruction that had taken place in, in Buffalo and in California. Truthfully, I came into church ready to leave and had no idea those heinous things happened on Saturday and that gun violence had destroyed so many communities in one day. I got into my prayer motion on Monday morning and realized I had some re-navigating of my mind and thought. It's difficult when we see so many things, acts of violence that pull us to and fro from our daily experiences where peace of mind and heart and body are too hard to find for so many needs, physical or otherwise, we go unmet. And even if all else seems to be going well, we still struggle through our personal and sometimes private heartaches, with, which threaten our own peace, threaten our own sense of well-being. And yet, I come to this hymn, and peace like a river. And I instantly are, I'm reminded of Fred Holsack. I remember singing these words during his final hour of life. And I remember singing this very hymn with Betty Sher as her family intoned these songs around her bedside. And even though her eyes were closed, the family and the spirit and, and the feeling of, feeling of peace and love filled that space and gave us all comfort. We found that it is well in the well of our souls because peace is present in Christ. Peace Like a River was written by Horatio Gates Spafford, and he wrote these words in the wake of an unspeakable tragedy. As the story goes, Horatio wrote these words after losing his four daughters at sea. His wife and him were the only two survivors on the vessel. And he found himself needing to find words of comfort. And so he wrote these words, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. O oh Lord, hasten the day when our faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolling back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. With this understanding, we find these words as a melodic statement of faith. We find a sense of believing and even learn, yearning to believe both at the same time. I believe this is where we find ourselves many times when tragedy makes things difficult in our lives, or we're given a diagnosis that forces us to change and to pivot and correct maybe what is to come in the future, when life doesn't go the way that we have planned. I hear this especially in the last verse of this hymn, where Horatio speaks of his longing for that final ending when faith will be sight, when we will be able to finally make sense of so much in this world now, which simply does not make room for peace. Only the promise in this week's gospel, my friends, a promise that Horatio Gates Spafford and countless others, countless others, of faith, people that have written into hymnody and they have clung to these words, have found and they have embraced. They recognize that this peace that we long for, this peace, is not in distant future, but it is already ours. It is ours for the taking in the here and the now, for the promise of the hymn rooted in the promise of Jesus. 
Jesus and to his disciples then and now is that God has already laid claim to us. And with that claim comes peace beyond our understanding, peace that is always ours for receiving. And there's no magic formula for receiving, for knowing its presence and power is there, and yet somehow, or at least this is how it has been for me in the hardest of times, in the, in the biggest of challenges, when my heart is most tender, I need these words of peace to come. And they do. Through terror and tears, it comes. In hope and despair, it comes. When the path and our place on it is clear and when it is hardly able to be discerned where we will take our next step, it comes. And when, when faith runs deep, and sometimes when it's hard to believe and find that faith, still it comes. It is peace that is here, and it is peace that is in us. And I do not know how this is so. I only know that it is so. And the Spirit is the one of the providers of this peace. My hope and my prayer for you this week as we venture into summer months of Sabbath, I also recognize that there will be things that change and pivot your lives. Take the hymn that has been provided for you in a blue slip of paper and meditate on it. Recognize that even in great tragedy, in great tragedy, these words found peace and comfort. Not just for Horatio, but they find peace and comfort for so many when we are dealing with death and when we are dealing with tragedy. It is my prayer that you take these words and I hope you will share the stories of when and where and how this peace of Christ comes to you and what it meant. Or share the stories of when and where and how you yearn for this peace still. Or share the stories of times that you know others to be embraced by this peace and how that has strengthened you in your own journey through times when sorrow like sea billows roll. Indeed, where you have seen and known and been embraced by this peace, we need to share it with others. And what might that witness mean to those with whom you gather in the days to come. Blessed journey, my friends. May this sin reign through your hearts and minds, and may the peace live in you and breathe through you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day will be joyful, joyful, we adore you. And um, I'll be playing trumpet on the melody. And if you can join us, please rise. We'll sing the entire hymn.
share our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops and pastors, deacons and lay leaders in their visionary and their partnership and in their planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundance harvest for farmers laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confront their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who are seeking healing and liberation and peace. We especially ask for prayers upon Esther and Carmen, John and Robert, and all those that we now name before you aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence, where they find your peace, where they find wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Lord God, with inflation, at a, at a high, we understand the, the gas prices and, and the, the shortcomings with fixed incomes. Help us to embrace those in need. And we provide opportunities to give out of abundance, to share what God has first given us to those who are struggling. When we meet together at your river of life, may we find peace that surpasses our understanding. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Assemble your, your people at rivers and streams and fonts, and where we remember our baptism and welcome others into your communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died, now and always. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. God's people say, Amen. The gifts of God with the people of God, let us share a symbol of peace with those around us. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us share a symbol of peace.
continue in our offering of God's abundance, we uh, continue to hold the pig pig out, and um, I will be honest, we have seen more people in need of gas assistance than I have in my 12 years of ministry this last month. Um, so if you're able, any money that is collected within the pink pig will go directly to put uh, Rudder's gift cards into the hands of people that are struggling to get to and from doctor's appointments or going to pick up groceries. Um, and just so you're aware, there are people that are truly hurting in our community, and I'm doing my best to triage them and getting them to New Hope Ministries and other places of assistance and support. So thank you for your generosity as we continue to help those in need. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. So you, go, you may go ahead and take your fellowship cup. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is when in our music God is glorified. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5.
to learn about being a communion assistant, we will do just a brief training. It will not last very long, but we welcome you to stick around um, just after church here today. But please, go in peace, share the peace, and be one with the Spirit's peace. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whee!